Today I'm going to teach you about something called methods inside C Sharp. And before we do that, I really quickly want to go over what exactly I have on the screen here since we'll be using this for a short example. Um, so what I did was I went ahead and kept one of the fields from the previous episode, which is the player health one. I also went ahead and kept the property that we created which essentially goes in and either grabs or changes the health of the player. So what I can do is I can go inside my start method down here at the bottom and I can actually reference the player health like so and actually do something with it. Now, one thing I need to show you before we start actually talking about methods is that we have something called debugging. And debugging is something that you will be doing constantly as you write code inside your video game. So whenever something goes wrong and it gives you error messages inside the console, inside your editor, debugging is what you're going to be spending your time on doing if Google doesn't provide you with an answer. So if you can't Google something and you just can't find an answer, debugging is what you need to do. One quick command that you need to know is something called debug.log. And debug.log is a way for us to output stuff into the console inside Unity. So if we were to go in here, create a string, and just write Daniel, go back into Unity. And if we were to click play, you can see that it now says Daniel inside the, the console inside Unity. So debugging or using this specific command here is something that you will be using constantly as you code. So with that in mind, I'm going to teach you about something called methods. So essentially when it comes to classes, like the one that we have in front of us here, we have three things. We have fields that we talked about already. We have properties, which we've also talked about already. And then we have methods. Methods are essentially a way for us to actually do stuff using code because up until now, properties and fields have just been used in order to create data, essentially, like for example, the player health, but it doesn't actually do anything with the player health inside our game. And that is what the methods do. Methods actually do stuff. It's kind of like if you take a person because a person can have an age, a height, eye color, hair color, all that type of thing, but all that stuff is just information about the player. That would be fields or properties about the player. Whereas if I actually need to do something, like if the person has to run, has to jump, has to take damage, has to attack, something like that, we would have to do that using a method because we actually do something inside the game. So with that said, uh, let's talk about how to create a method. If I were to go down here, you can see that we have a private method called start, and that is actually a built-in method inside Mono Behavior. I've said that so many times up until now throughout these lessons here, uh, but it's very important that you pay attention to the fact that there is a difference between built-in methods, which are methods that exist inside all programming language that we can grab onto and use for something. For example, start, if you use that one, it's going to run this code when I start the game. But we can also build our own methods, and that's what I want to talk about. So when it comes to methods, we have two different types that you need to know about. We have methods that actually return a value, and then we have methods that don't return anything. And I'll show you both examples so you know exactly what they do. So in the first one here, I'm going to say we have a method, which is a void type method, which I'll explain in a second called take damage. And then I'll include some parentheses, curly brackets. Now we use Pascal case here for the naming convention, just like with the property up here, meaning that we start with a capitalized letter and then any other words coming after do the same thing. And the parentheses are here in order to, first of all, show us that this is a method and not a property, because if we didn't include the parentheses, it would be a property. The second thing is that we also use it to pass in data. So if I want something inside the method to change depending on some outside data, then we go ahead and pass it inside the parentheses. This is by the way, also a private method at the moment. Again, like I said, the default state is private if you don't include anything. So this is the same thing as doing this basically, which means that we can't access this method from other scripts out there. If I want to make this public, I can also do that. So now it's a public method. So now I can actually access it from another script. So what I'll do is I'll keep it private for now. And when it comes to the void keyword that we have here, it just basically means that we don't plan on returning any type of data 
inside this method, which means that the method is going to do something, but we're not planning on returning anything from it. That'll make sense in a second. So let me go ahead and create another method down here. I'm going to create a integer type method, and I'm going to call this one just something random like show damage, just to give it something. And as you'll see, it's created in the same way. First, we go ahead and tell it what kind of data do we want to return. In this case, it's not going to be void, but the data type. And of course, we could also make this a private or public, you know, just like with the other one. And we do also include the parentheses here at the end so we can pass in data. And you'll actually notice that I'm getting an error message here. And that's because right now, I'm actually not returning anything inside the actual method. And whenever you do any kind of methods like this, you have to return values from within the method. So if I go inside of it, I can say return just 10 because I need to return an integer. If it were to say true instead, you'll actually notice that it's going to throw me an error message because this is a Boolean data type and I'm actually asking to return a integer data type. So I could also say I wanted to return a Boolean instead and that would fix it. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep this down here for now because I do want to demonstrate what exactly this outputs into the console. Uh, so let me go ahead and talk a bit about the previous method here first. Now void, like I said, means that we don't plan on returning anything. So if I were to go in here, the first thing I want to do is I want to calculate how much damage am I actually taking because this is a take damage method. So I should probably take some damage. So I go up here, I grab my property called player health because remember, we don't want to just grab the field and change it directly. Even though we could do that, it's not the best way to do it. So I'm going to say play a health, go inside, take damage. And I'm going to set this one equal to play a health minus 10. So what we're actually doing here is we're saying that play a health right now is 100. And when I take 10 in damage, this is going to be 90. But there's actually a shorthand to do this. Instead of doing play a health equal to play a health, we can actually go ahead and say that we just want to say play a health minus equal to 10, which means the exact same thing as what I just did. We're saying that player health needs to equal itself minus whatever is behind the equal sign. So right now, this is the exact same thing as doing this, just so you know. So now that we have this, I can actually go ahead and show you the difference between using a void type method and a data type method that actually needs to return something. Uh, but before we do that, let's actually change this bottom one so it matches what exactly this one does. So don't worry about the name. Um, it's just to give it a name because we can't take the same name as this one here. It's going to throw an error message. So I just called it something else. So let's not worry too much about the naming and what they mean. Uh, let's just go ahead and take what is inside here and pass it inside the bottom method. And then I'm going to change this to a integer type method as well as return player health because this is a integer type property, <laughs> right? Because that is what we set up here. So with this, if I were to go inside my start method here, which remember is being called anytime we start the game, I can actually go ahead and do something called debug dot log. So what I'll do is I'll take my first one, which is called take damage, and I'm going to output it into my console, which you'll notice doesn't actually return any data. As you can see here, you cannot convert void to object because it doesn't return anything. But if I were to take show damage and pass that in there, you'll notice that if I go back into my Unity, play it, that it does actually return something into the console. It says 90 right there. So this one returns data. This one does not return data. It just does something. So right now we updated player health, but we don't actually return player health afterwards. We just update player health and that's it. And to just kind of show that, let me go ahead and take my take damage, place it above debug.log, and then inside my debug.log, I'm just going to go ahead and spit out what my health is. So we're going to say uh, player health is just going to get spit out. So right now, when I start my game, it is going to first of all run my take damage method, which then goes in and subtracts 10 from my player health. And then I'm just going to output this property up here after it got updated. So if I go inside my console now, refresh it, let's clear it, just so we can see. You're going to notice that it says 
90, just like before. So we can't directly return any type of value using a void method, but we can still use it in order to do something. We just don't return anything from it. Now with this, let me just go ahead and delete the last method we have down here. So we just have the void one. And let me go ahead and pass something into my method. Because what if I want to change the player health depending on what type of damage I'm receiving? So it's not going to be 10 every single time. Because what if I get hit by a stronger attack? Then it might be 30 or something. Uh, so what I can do is I can say that I want to add in a parameter into my parentheses, which is a placeholder, by the way. And this one is going to be an integer data type. And I'm just going to call this one damage. You can call this whatever you want. It's not going to change anything. It's just basically the word that we're going to use inside the method to reference the data that we pass in from the outside. So I'm going to take this and instead of 10, I'm going to reference to damage. So when I go back inside my method up here, inside my start method, I can actually pass in a piece of data. Actually, it is telling me I have to pass in a piece of data because I told it I'm going to do that down here. So I'm going into the parentheses and I'm just going to pass in 50. So now if I go back inside my console, actually run the game. Let's actually go and stop it here, refresh it and run it. You'll now see that it says 50 inside my console because it is taking the data that I have decided when I used the method in order to subtract with the player health. Now, of course, if you're actually building a video game, um, you're not going to be passing in a number like I am right here, where I say 50 or, you know, 20 or something like that. But instead, this number here is going to be from another script where you might have a enemy with the script attached to it that has a certain attack that deals a certain amount of damage. And then you would take that enemy's damage and pass in instead, uh, instead of heart writing 20 or 50 into it, uh, if that kind of makes sense. But it's just to kind of show that we can use methods and create methods. And by the way, this is a very small method. These methods here can become extremely long, depending on what you're trying to do. But it's just to kind of show you a simple example of how to use a method and how to actually do something inside your code. And the last thing I just kind of want to show you here is if you start getting overwhelmed by looking at all these, you know, pieces of code, uh, you can actually collapse them out here. So if I want my property, which is my player health, to collapse so it's a little bit more um, organized to look at, I can always just sort of collapse it here. I can do the same thing with my start method if I wanted to do that, with the take damage method if I wanted to do that. So just to kind of shorten everything a little bit if you think it starts to look messy. So just to show you that we can collapse things. So this is basically what methods are when it comes to programming inside Unity. Methods are used constantly. The same thing goes for fields and properties, by the way. Like all this stuff here that you're seeing is used constantly. And if you're sitting there right now thinking, that's a lot of information in just like three or four lessons. Like I, I understand, it is a lot of information. But just know that Every person who has started making video games felt the same way as you. They felt overwhelmed by all this information I'm feeding you throughout these videos here. Um, the more you get to use these methods and properties and all this information you're learning, the more it's going to stick to you. Nobody remembers this on their first try, unless they have like a photographic memory or something. Um, so just uh, keep at it. We will get to do some examples pretty soon where we actually start doing something inside the actual Unity engine so we can actually start moving things around, using methods and using fields and properties. So just go ahead and rewatch the video, take a breather, and you'll be fine. Everything is going to be okay. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.